Welcome to Carly Tackles, a paver patio for my pool. Our pool is a rectangular 18 foot by 9 foot pool. The liner is going to sit on the sand in the middle and the frame is needs to sit on something sturdy like pavers. To start, we mark out where we want the paver patio to be using ground stakes. Next, I use a tiller to break up the ground inside of the patio paver area. We know that the area is not level by any means. It slopes to the front and to the side. Instead of just adding dirt to the low sides, we hope to dig up the high sides, move that dirt to the low end, and hopefully have itself level out so we do not have to purchase dirt. I didn't want to get the tiller too close to the patio and accidentally take a chip out of it. Instead, I'm using a hand hoe right next to the patio to break up that soil. As I'm doing this, Jules is picking out some really big clumps. When I was done hand hoeing, I was back to tilling. You may notice that I'm tilling on the outside of the stakes as well. I just thought that would make it easier when it came time to moving around all of the dirt. I started transporting some dirt from the high areas to the low areas and then our new puppy Macy found out that fresh soil is so much fun and how much fun would it be for a white puppy to just roll and dig in that dirt and just get as dirty as possible. What a punk. And a special shout out to Tootsie who knew better and stayed out of my dirt. Good girl Tootsie. I think you can imagine how long this took me to load up a wagon at a time full of dirt and take it to the other end. It took a while. As much as I dug up and transferred, we still needed dirt. Luckily, someone had free dirt in our community and we were able to take theirs. Now the leveling process begins. Using a two by four, a level, a nail spike, mine was 12 inches, I start off leveling the area, drilled a hole in one end of the 2x4 on its side and hammered the nail into the ground through the 2x4. I placed the level on the 2x4 and dragged in circular patterns. I was able to lift up on the 2x4 or push down depending on the level of the ground. I moved the 2x4 to many different areas in this section. When the ground was level, I placed geotextile fabric on top to help prevent weed growth. I was able to purchase a roll that almost fit my dimensions perfectly. I barely had to cut and I had absolutely no seams. I placed pavers on the tarp to hold it down while I worked. Our first level of sand that we're going to put down is paver based sand. It has some rocks, it's supposed to help with drainage. And we're going to carry each 50 pound bag over to the area. We're going to Cut the bag open, tear off the top, and dump. I started in a small section and I packed it in. I wanted to have a sturdy base for that 2x4 to sit on, and I just emptied the bags in an arc. Wherever that 2x4 arm could reach, that's how I knew where to put bags. And I just did one section at a time, leveling as I went making sure that I had sand pressed against the 2x4 if I needed to raise it up. I had the sand there that would lay it down or I could scrape it. And after you did a small area, we would pack it in and move the 2x4 to a new area. When you're moving your 2x4 to a new area, you want to make sure you have a good amount of compacted sand for the 2x4 to rest in. If it's loose, the 2x4 will dig into it. So you want enough to support it you also want to set it up kind of being level. It's a lot easier to lay your sand down if that's already level and then you can work out your areas and you just slowly work your way to the end using that 2x4 as you go. Here is a closer look how I use the 2x4. In front of the 2x4, you can't see it yet at this angle, I made sure I have plenty of sand against the board along the entire thing. 
but I have my hand through the level holding it down on the 2x4 to make sure that's not an issue. And I'm slowly pulling this 2x4, but my eyes are always on that bubble. Uh, there might be times where I need to lift up on the 2x4 to allow sand, or I might have to dig it in to scrape it. And I'm always watching to make sure that I have sand all the way across. You saw me just take my hand and scrape it to the end because I know that end, I can see that 2x4 is not touching the ground. So I need to lay more sand down. So I take my hand and scrape it up there. And then I re-go over that area until everything is done. We did rent a play compactor to compact the area when we were almost done. Now we did use the hand stomper as we went, but we did the final thing with the play compactor before moving on to our next step. We purchased paver edging, little plastic things you can do for like your garden. They make them for pavers. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're the exact same thing. They just brand it differently. I wanted to get an idea of where the outside should be. So we're laying these edging around and we're actually picking up all of our pavers and laying them out so we can put the edging in place and then we're going to check to make sure everything's square and it's perfect and we'll move things around if we have to. And then we're gonna go back and pick up all of those pavers that we put down so that we can lay our next level of sand. Super fun, but it was the only way I could really ensure that it would all fit by doing a little sample run first. And now that I have the edging guy down, I don't have to worry at all when I'm doing the sand, leveling sand. Using a jigsaw, I'm going to cut out a notch in my 2x4. I'm taking out 3 quarters of an inch in its height. This is going to sit on that paper edger. The paper edger is 1 and 3 quarters tall, so by taking out 3 quarters of my 2x4, that ensures that when I scrape it, I'm leaving an inch of leveling sand. You can also see in this video that I have a white PVC pipe. This is 3 quarters. Now the outside diameter is an inch, so I have something to rest the 2x4 on in the middle, and that notch is resting on the sides. By using the scraping method, I am laying an inch of leveling sand down. Very similar to the process with the nail and spinning in circles, I need to make sure that I have sand in front of the board all the way through. So I want to lay down sand if I have gaps and I want to scrape sand if it's too high. And you're just using that PVC pipe as something to hold up your board and it may move and you can easily put it back. When it's time to move your PVC, you'll gently pull it out and place new sand in. You don't want to step on your sand, walk on your sand, so you want to go slow and just do a small area at a time to make sure that you can reach. Once you put your pavers in place, you can walk on those, but you don't want to leave any imprints in the sand. You also need to be careful when laying your pavers down. Now that one weighed 72 pounds. It was a little hard to control, as you can see by my let go reaction. You don't want these pavers to put divots in the sand. When you put them into place, that would give it room to shift under your feet. You want them as stable as possible. You might want to consider the weight and size of the pavers before starting your project. If you don't feel you'd be able to lift and control a 72 pound paver, you might want to go with something smaller. The 16 by 16 ones that I'm using weighed around 50 pounds, I think they were 46, and the 8 by 16s were 24. I like the 8 by 16s the best. We did not have a pattern picked out to follow. We didn't really want that. The only thing we tried to do was to make sure we didn't have seams that ran the entire length or we had a lot of the same type of stone in there. So we just tried to balance it, sizes and colors, and we tried to pay attention to the seams. To help me space the pavers or to keep them square, I'm measuring for the, these two ends. Now these pavers are not quite 16 by 16, they're 3 8 left. So I'm trying to leave even spacing between them. When we do the last level of sanding, it would be like almost grout like tile. You have that little spacing in them. So I'm trying to make sure it stays uniform. And you can see this picture, I kind of have that general spacing throughout. 
this project will take time but you want to make sure everything is level and you're doing it right so don't rush the process as you saw in the video intro we are doing a frame around the pool basically so now I'm starting the outside pieces but I'm still making sure I'm putting all the sand down in the middle and I'll come back to that that middle part will be full with sand all the way up to the pavers when all said and done. I took that long PVC and I cut a small piece to help me finish up the end. It was overhanging the edging and I didn't want to increase my height. While I'm finishing up this end, Jules and Macy are measuring the other end to place more edging on the inside of our pavers. This will help keep the different sands in their respected areas. We are going to fill the middle with leveling sand and we don't want that working its way in between the cracks of our pavers. We cut a bunch more leveling sandbags open and dumped it in the area. Now we're still working a small area and working our way back because we don't want to overfill with sand. I flipped that 2x4 on the other side so the notch facing up and I'm lucky enough that the 2x4 extends on top of the pavers on both sides. So I get to just scrape that sand across using those pavers to make sure that I am level. So I do this whole process all the way down, slowly filling bags behind me. We use the plate compactor on our pavers, which was what the instruction said to do. However, it was a mistake and it cracked some of our pavers, which was really sad. After that, we used the hand stamper. But we did use the plate compactor to compact the leveling sand in the middle. You might be wondering, why are you compacting this leveling sand, but you didn't compact the leveling sand under the pavers? Great question. Two different uses. Under the pavers, you want it to be light and even, and then you're gonna pack the pavers down into the sand. This area is where the pool goes. You want that to be hard. So you're doing this leveling sand. We're gonna do a few runs and then we'll put more sand on it after we compact it down. But you want that area where the pool liner sits to be compacted tight. I'll give this one to the puppy. She knew to stay on that path and not walk in that sand. She followed me around a few times on the pavers. Once I've compacted an area, Jules followed behind me and with the back side of a brush, not the bristle side, the back side, she dragged the sand and that was filling any, any holes. And then I went and packed at that area and then she brushed the other section. So we were taking turns. She would brush, I would compact, and then she brushed at the very end. Before calling it done and moving on to the next thing, I wanted to check to see if it was level. And it was in some spots. And then what the heck? How is this not level? I used the pavers. So I got more sand, put my two by four into the ground and started spinning with my level on it and reworking the whole area. This may seem like a pain, but you want to make sure this is level for your pool you would regret it later. Take the time, do the work. And now for the third type of sand, a polymer locking sand. This basically works like grout and tiles. You put it in between your stones. You wanna make sure you're brushing in all different types of directions, the instructions say. And then you're gonna take a compactor or plate compactor if you wanna risk your pavers and you're going to tap it in. You're basically trying to vibrate that sand down and fill up any holes. You're going to repeat the brushing and tamping process like three whole times. You brush, you tamp, you brush, you tamp. And then you kind of get it so that it's filled in like this. With a finer bristle brush, you do a last sweeping in your area. So you're going to sweep, stomp, sweep, stomp, sweep, stomp, and then fine brush you want to do small sections at a time. The last step is to apply water. The instructions on this bag said to water a small section for 30 seconds, wait 30 seconds, and reapply water for 30 seconds. 
we watered a small section for 30 seconds and then moved on to a different area, watered that for 30 seconds, and then went back to the original. So we were utilizing our wait time until the whole thing was finished. And that's it. That is our paver patio for our pool. I have another video on how to set up the pool, but this is it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you'd like to see more videos similar to this, please subscribe to my channel, Carly Tackles DIY, Tools and Gadgets, Tips and Tricks. And make sure you hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new content.